Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, and my patron peeps, it's time for the podcast, uh, my patron peeps, my, my regular listeners, my Apple podcast supporters, my uh, new listeners, welcome to the show if you're new. Uh, we've got people that listen, we've got people that are listening to this, people are sleeping to this, and a lot of people that are getting ready for bed and winding down because it's time for sleep with me. Oh, and especially brain bots. Uh, brain bots are parts of us, uh, that are in our brains, or they could be feelings, uh, physical sensations that tend to keep us uh, awake. You know, they're moving around. They're always, they're always, they're never in sleep mode. Brain bots, we don't have sleep mode. We turn on, uh, but we're, we're during the day, whenever it's quiet, we activate, but we're never asleep. Brain bots or, you know, other things that, that brain bots are a metaphor for. What's a metaphor for? <laughs> That's a, uh, uh, so, uh, welcome to sleep with me, the podcast that's not here to put you to sleep. I'm here to keep you company because the deep, dark night can be really lonely for a lot of us. I'm here to take your mind off of stuff. Whatever stuff is keeping you awake, uh, it could be physical sensations, thoughts, feelings, whatever it is, I'm here to keep you company in the deep, dark night to be your friend. And the show is very different. It does take a few tries to get used to, so see how it goes. I'm so glad you're here. We got some support coming up. That's how we get to put the show out for free twice a week. Then there's long meandering intro meant to ease you into bedtime, and then there'll be a bedtime story. So I'm so glad you're here. Welcome to Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. And if you're listening on YouTube, make sure to subscribe to the show, like this episode, so I can keep putting these out directly on YouTube because we're trying something new out. Please uh, subscribe uh, and like the show right now as you're uh, right before you get ready to drift off. Uh, and that'll make it possible for us to keep putting the shows out in this new new style we're trying. Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble uh, getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. This is Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake. It could be thoughts, you know, things on your mind, thoughts, uh, th- think, think it's th- thoughts about the past, the present, the future. So thoughts, it could be uh, um, physical sensations, uh, changes in uh, uh, time, temperature, routine. It could be feelings. Whatever's coming up for you, I'm here to take your mind off of stuff and keep you company so you could fall asleep. And I do that for a couple of reasons, right? Uh, one, I know how it feels. Uh, tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep. Uh, like, uh, I know how that feels. Uh, I know the frustration or the, the, the antici- negative anticipation. I don't know if that's what you call it, but where you're like, oh, no, you know, uh, what's going to be like tonight? Dread, I guess, is the term they use. <laughs> Who's they? The term I use. Uh, uh, but, uh, like, uh, uh, so I know how it feels, and I might not know exactly what you're going through. The reason I list a bunch of different things is because I want you to know you're not alone. Because I don't know if you've had this experience. You've been in a house full of people. You've had a roommate. You've had a partner. You've had a guest over. You got a pet, whatever it is. But when you can't sleep, it does feel lonely. And sometimes, you know, you know, I live alone sometimes. Sometimes my daughter's not there and my dog's not there. And, and uh, it can feel lonely then, too. But the thing that this podcast is a reminder is that, you're, you you know, we're together alone. I don't know. It's pseudo digital or whatever, but uh, we're all together and we're in this together. And maybe all of us are a little bit different facet of that. And what I mean by that is I might not know exactly what you're going through, but I can probably relate to how it feels and say, yeah, that's tough. That's not easy. And even if I can't, there is someone listening right now who can. So that's what I mean. 
we're, we're together and we're, we're alone or we're lonely and together or alone together, whatever, however you want to say it, because I've never figured out a way to say it uh, that makes any sense, but you get the gist of it, right? Uh, the other reason I make the show is even more important, which is you. You deserve a place you could get some rest. You deserve the rest you need so your life is more manageable. You deserve a bedtime you don't have to dread that you could look forward to or at least feel neutral about. And that's what I want to provide for you because the the thing is, like, if you're getting the rest you need, your life is better. That means the whole world is a better place to be in. And that is true. And it's also important that it's your world, and, and that's important. Our world needs you, uh, and, and it just needs you, you know, it doesn't need you all at once uh, being perfect or whatever. It just needs you, you know, it'd be nice for you to be in this world a little bit more rested, right? And it'd be nice for the world to have you here a little bit more rested. So those are the reasons I make the show. What I do is I send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones, pointless meanders, and superfluous tangents, which means I'm going to go off topic. I'm going to get mixed up. I'm going to forget what I was talking about. Then I'll, like, uh, like then I'll, like, just, like, right there. And then, um, so that's what pointless meanders and superfluous, superfluous tangents is where I double back, say, what was I talking about? So there's that. Uh, uh, creaky dulcet tones means my voice is just not traditionally soothing. This is a podcast you don't really listen to, but you can listen to it. You could listen to it, but you don't have to. So that's a little bit different at first. You're kind of barely actively passive. You're almost passive. Like a lot of people say active or passive is uh, either or or neither nor, but I'm just a bore. Uh that maybe one day you'll barely adore. Sorry, I just broke into poetry there. Or rhyme. Yes, correct, brain. My brain said that is not poetry. That was rhyming. Thank you. It was poet. Could I say it was poetic rhyming? No, definitely not. Was that iambic pitameter? What do you call a a pie eating contest where uh, you're eating poetry based pies? Not iambic pitameter. Okay, what do you call poetry, a po- po- what do you call a pie made by a poet? Okay, my brain has now just left the building. So, um, what's they saying? Oh, this is a pie case, you know, obviously. I mean, you say there's something, in, there's something to what he's saying. It just never gets there. And I'd say iambic pitameter. Pita- I don't know, like a tameter. So that's where, like, uh. But um, if I knew what I I am, but but whatever, you know what I'm saying. So this is a podcast you just barely listen to, like a friend talking that you're not really paying attention to, but I don't care. You could say, oh, that's funny, almost, uh, Scoots, that's great. Uh, Yeah, I'm picturing, you know, poets eating pie now. Um, Okay. So it's a podcast kind of pass. I don't podcast. You don't. I don't know. You just like sand going through your hands, out of focus a picture, and or abstract painting out of focus. I guess would be more accurate. Also, it's a podcast that doesn't put you to sleep. Like I, when I first started making this podcast, there wasn't really sleep podcasts. Now there's a ton of them, but this is a sleep podcast that doesn't put you to sleep. I'm here to keep you company while you fall asleep. That's what never worked for me about other sleep audio. It didn't put me to sleep, and I kept thinking about that, and I couldn't get over it. That's why these shows are over an hour. No pressure to fall asleep. There's people who listen to the show who can't sleep at all or who need a break during the day. And so I'm here for them to the very end, but that also means you don't, like, I'm here for you even if you're not listening to me. So um, that's really the, uh, it's, a, it's a conundrum. I'm here to be your boar friend, your boar bay, your boar sib, your boar bud, your neighbor, your boar burr, your boar bee, your boars, your boar bra, your boar bestie, your friend, and just keep you company while you fall asleep, but to take your mind off of stuff, to be a friendly presence. Now, the, the other thing about that is that uh, most people don't like me at first or don't understand and they get frustrated or they get here and they're skeptical. And so if you're feeling that way, that's very understandable because this show is very different 
uh, it takes a few tries to get used to. And that's what just lots and lots and lots and lots of people over the past 10 years have told me. It took two or three tries to get used to the show. Sometimes that's over a year, years of period. Like sometimes someone listens twice. This is not a common occurrence, but I'd say maybe 5% of listeners say, I'll never listen to that man again. He's, uh, he's not even, he doesn't even have a rocker to be off of his rocker. And then a few years later, maybe someone else recommends it or they try it again and they're in a little bit different space and they say, oh, now I get it. He was serious. Uh, we don't listen to him and he doesn't put you to sleep. Uh, and that's what really works about the show. So give it a few tries and see how it goes. You really have nothing to lose. And here's the other thing. Not only do you have nothing to lose if you give this show a few tries, if it doesn't work for you or you're already 100% sure and that's pretty common too, that you don't like me or the show or that it's not for you, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you has other sleepy stuff on there. So give that a try, all right? Uh, there's other sleep podcasts and other stuff on there you could check out to put you to sleep. So check those out. Um, what else we got? Uh, sleep with me, pod- like it doesn't put you to sleep. But most people don't. Oh, structure of the show also throws people off. Um, so I'll tell you about the structure of the show. It starts off with a greeting, uh, friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. And they say a few other things. So you feel seen and welcomed in. You say, I might check that podcast out. Then there's uh, support, spot, like ad support. So the show can be free because uh, honestly, there's a lot of work that goes into this podcast and there's a lot, a lot of people. There's a lot, a lot of people that get a lot out of listening to the free show. And that's important to me is many people benefiting from the podcast as they can. Then there's the intro, which is a meandering. I go on and on and on. And the intro isn't so much meant to put you to sleep, but to ease you into bedtime and introduce you to the show and to be a buffer before the bedtime story. You could use it as part of your wind down routine, your getting ready for bed routine, your in bed getting comfortable routine. Or you could fall asleep, or you could skip it and start to show 20 or 30 minutes. But for as you become a regular listener, you'll kind of see what works for you. But for most people, it's something that eases them into bedtime. I tuck you in a little bit. Then there's support again, and then there'll be our bedtime story. Tonight will be our episodically modular series journey into the world of friends, about friends playing a game together, or well, they're creating a game and then they kind of came, became a part of the game. But they're really journeying into the world of friendship. You know, what could be a better place to journey into the world of? So that'll be a nice story. Then there's thank yous at the end. So it's the structure of the show and why I make the show. I'm really glad you're here. I work really hard. I yearn and I strive. And I really hope we can help you fall asleep. Thanks again for coming by. And here's a couple of ways I'm able to do this for free twice a week. Hey, everybody, this is Scoots. I almost forgot uh, that I was supposed to uh, introduce our podcast here, our episodically modular series, Journey into the World of Friends. What could be more sleepy than friends uh, playing, uh, building, playing, and now fully immersed in a, in a like, uh, I think that's what's happening in a game, a role-playing game. Um. They're playing roles, but their first role is friendship, uh, and they'll kind of set everything up uh, because they usually have a meeting. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, uh, like, uh, yeah, let's go from here uh, to our uh, oh, whole, whoa, boy, sorry to slow things down even further, but talk about, uh, like, an adventure and friendship and friendly faces uh it was uh, my dial of destiny was the cl- all hands on the clock were pointed towards amazement uh, because he's so humble. He didn't, you know, he doesn't hype it up. Uh, I mean, I thought I was blown away when I saw him uh, on the challenge. But I mean, when I saw Mr. Antonio, ba- Antonio Banderas on uh, an Indiana Jones uh, and... And honestly, like I, I like I, I guffawed and um, I made some sort of joy whoop. I think some poet once called it that. Uh, I don't know who it was, but like I think they had a better term for it. But some utterance, an involuntary utterance of joy 
came out of my mouth. I'm not kidding, Antonio. Good thing I was going to a matinee that was actually full. So great news. This is in, I couldn't be there the first two weeks. I'm sorry. But, you know, I wanted to make sure you got that third week bump. And my theater was packed. It was, I guess it wasn't technically, well, I can't remember if the ticket was a matinee. It was 4.45 p.m. And it was me and a squad of retirees uh, hiding out from the heat, man. But the, you brought the heat. Uh, and uh, if you ever want to go swimming, like, uh, like holy cow, you were, I, anyway. So, so, by the way, uh, I'm saying that uh, in the Indiana Jones Dial of the Destiny, and we got Phoebe Waller Bridge and Antonio Banderas, in addition uh, to a, a, a huge, ama- a, like, I mean, Harrison Ford and an amazing cast. So, uh, holy mackerel. Uh, I, I like, uh, so, like, I'm, spe- I'm not speechless because I can't be speechless on a sleep podcast, but here's Mr. Antonio Banderas. Is the friends beyond the binaries of ladies and gentlemen, the boys and girls? It's time. Tick tock for your destiny to be dialed in to friendship uh, in the journey into the world of friends. Yippee. Thank you, my friend. That's very kind. And all the listeners, uh, thank you so much. That's Mr. Antonio Monderas, and uh, this is Journey into the World of Friends, everybody. Okay, okay. Oh, uh, what in the name of me being your grace? Uh, uh, okay, everybody else is still slowly stirring. I'm, at least I'm cuddled here with Granada of Darmok. Uh, and we seem, okay, I'm just piecing things together. Your grace, uh, Lord Von Chill, is piecing things together, everybody. And I'm going to stay in character as that's how I'm able to handle what's happening. We are in a giant round tube that we used a pulley system by, created by Granada of Darmok uh, to climb up into, and then we tested it to make sure it was secure, and then we realized we would need a night of rest uh, before we headed in, and also to kind of let things calm down. I mean, we did make our way towards this next room, let me actually review things. Uh, this is your grace. Uh, I see you're all, no, no one, I'll just review things. Uh, I'll try to go, give us a little recap. Uh, we, uh, uh, full recap. Okay. While well, everybody's waking up. Thank you, Granada of Darmok, for that. That, uh, that was not a careless whisper in my ear, but, uh, um, okay. So we were, we, we, we are adventurers, a party of adventurers, um, some would say we're friends, though we've uh, we had gone our separate ways after another adventure, and we we're brought together once again by Wada, uh, our wizard, uh, bold and and intelligent, keen and cunning, Wada, and uh, to uh, take on it. Oh, oh, well, we're also brought together by the Baron of the Boil. That's where it's, it gets complicated. Originally, we were building a campaign to practice friendship and adventuring for other adventurers. Uh, and par- as part of that campaign, we were called together by the Baron of the Boyle, the beloved leader of uh, Florida, the sun- state of sun, uh, who uh, was had uh, finally taken over control of the water flow from the north to the south to make sure it was mostly freely distributed. Uh, the Baron had come out on top, uh, but then after years of, uh, of, uh, good years, you know, whatever they call them, years of honey and rose or whatever, and bread, uh, and things, uh, the, the water flow started to deteriorate and no one knew why, but maybe the Baron, now I'm realizing maybe the Baron of the Boyle had an idea or an inkling because it turned out Vendul uh, old, uh, what do you call that? Uh, a foundling of, uh, is that what Vendul is? Nobody knows the, uh, Vendul part, uh, cool blooded, part warm blooded, possibly a wizard also powerful, powerful wizard, very well, uh, b- 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 like went to the best of mage college. I don't know. So why is there more than one mage college university? 
excuse me. Uh, but, uh, you know, my family owns a few universities, Wada. No, I'm kidding. I mean, the, the, the few, that's uh, underestimate. Uh, anyway, so uh, Vendul, it turns out, was behind this water flow. But we, we didn't really know more. So we ventured here to the park, uh, the land of leisure, uh, on a mission from the Baron of the Boyle, uh, because the Baron of the Boyle's son had uh, gone on an adventure ostensibly to stop the duel uh, and uh, to restore the free flow of water. What we've learned since then is that uh, the Baron of Boyle's son uh, fell into the hands of the duel. We don't know the state of that, of the Baron of the Boyle, though we do know the state of two adventurers, at least from that party, who are, you know, depending on how you view things, with the Flor- one or one or more, one or three or four of the Florences, uh, uh, maybe the Flor- Florence, the supreme being, who I know, I, I realize, is, is uh, Eleanor, is one of a, a supreme being. And we found a note. Uh, oh, so we went into the journey. In, we, we journeyed into the journey into the world of friends. Into the world, we journeyed into the world of friends because uh, the the old attraction based on uh, friends uh, that sing a uh, famous song re- re- rebooted twice. Uh, attractions, I guess, spread around the globe. But this one in the world of leisure is where we were. Uh, uh, we also had a mission, you know, if we couldn't fulfill our mission, I'm, I may not be remembering everything correctly, but uh, to, uh, um, oh, because th- there's also a well of magic, which we are familiar with, uh, otherworldly, no, not magic, okay, otherworldly power underneath the park here. And that's why all the uh, parts of this attraction have come to life. All the characters in the attraction are alive and sentient. And it's very complicated how that happens, but probably something like a, a well of a, a soul well. And um, we met Mary Bear, who uh, was helping. Re- we helped repair some of the uh, parts of the ride. And we, Mary Bear, you know, begged us not to set the self the self, like. Oh, cause so uh, we we're also tasked with if. Uh, the Baron of the Boyle tried to strong arm Vadul. That did not work. So if we cannot defeat Vadul and get the Baron of the Boyle's son, we were to set the things uh, to flood this area so that the well of otherworldly magic could never be accessed. And that eventually would also restore the free flow of water. Because here on the other side of the park, uh, powered by the sea... And giant seawalls, I don't understand that part, but uh, are these locks that control the freshwater flow that have been shut off or something? Now, we learned the reason they were shut off is because the Baron of the Boyle is trying to dry out uh, the water and to dig out this uh, uh, power, power source. I'm really going on here. Uh, but this is what we need to know. Plus, everybody's still waking up or, or falling, asleep, falling back asleep, and uh, which is great. Uh, nobody needs to wake up uh, here at all. Nobody needs to. I'm just running through this, and because I guess I'll take lead this week. They don't. Nobody calls me your grace or, or, or my grace for nothing. Okay, so. Uh, uh, that was what what our plan was: you, defeat Vitul. Save the Baron of the Boyle's son, save the world. And if we had to to set the area to flood, we would do that too. Um, and we we're willing to up until recently, where our party kind of split on, hey, these are sentient, uh, these are ride characters that are sentient. They can't leave the area. They're somehow uh, physically connected to, they can only exist within their attraction. And so uh, if we were to flood the area, this, this, this attraction and other attractions, which we can presume have gained some sentience as well. So the, uh, we, were, we were debating that when uh, Granat of Darmok found a note on one of the Baron of the Boyle's adventuring party saying, we put these runes into this thing, this magic device, and already started the process of... Uh, 
I guess they're runes that would like, uh, I don't know why do you kind of explain it to me? There's like uh, different runes for different uh, properties, all powerful properties. And all of all the runes activate at once, then that would cause the uh, undoing of all the locks and the entire area. And so they're pulling, pulling magic, I don't know, from the air or something. So they're charging, I guess, uh, we talked about this late into the night while everybody else was uh, sound asleep. Uh, put me right to sleep eventually. Thanks, Wada. But those runes had been activated uh, by the Baron of the Boyle's son's party. And now we say, well, should we deactivate it? We, we don't know what to do. I guess in some sense now we don't have to choose. We still have to, you know, complete our two missions, ideally. And then we could shut off the... Um, thing if we don't shut it off, like either way, it sounds like the world's in great shape now. All will be well, as Emma Otter once said. So what we're doing now, why we're sleeping in, uh, this is uh, from uh, climate control is what they uh, called these uh, back in the uh, the before time. This giant tube we're in is in the ceiling of uh, Journey into the World of Friends, and we're going to navigate it into the next room. Uh, hopefully my voice isn't caring, but I think your bodies are in the way. So, and I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm using my indoor voice, my quiet indoor voice anyway. But so we're going to go into this next room, which was you, which I guess, uh, uh, is the finale of the ride. Wada was explaining to me. And somewhere in that room is a... Oh, 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 and and uh, Mary Bear said, probably still up in the ceiling is a pretend hot air balloon. In the basket of the hot air balloon is a key to the security room underneath this attraction. And I guess we're in a little bit. Is this part of, is this one of these boondoggles as part of the adventure? Is there a more efficient way to do this adventure then getting this key and going to the security room, then we still, I mean, we do have time. But Mary Bear made it clear that uh, that, that that would be like, uh, we're going to need more resources if we want to defeat Vidul. Also, we learned that uh, these sentient beings can produce beautiful music and dance. Uh, and that touched my heart uh, and made me want to fix things, you know, complete all our missions. And not save the world at the expense of these uh, sentient uh, uh, ride care friends. Sorry, thank you for correcting me. Uh, at our friends, even though they're ter they're called friends, uh, and you know, Zell feels very st strong about them because you know, as I, I I know, Zell sleeps with stuffies, and these are like little stuffed animals, uh, a little bit bigger than you know, a, a stuffed animal, size of a child. And, you know, they are aged, but they are still cute. And so we're going to go into this room. Ideally, perfect. We're in the ceiling. It'd be great if we could just uh, sneak in with stealth, uh, get the key, and uh, go from there. And I think that's everything. Is there anything else I'm missing? Oh, where, what else? Uh, I think they caught us up. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, there was uh, Vidul's, uh, they, uh, some of Vidul's minions came because they saw Mary Bear and they knew Mary Bear had been in another place. And so Mary Bear is starting, a, what do they call that? Uh, like a like a word of mouth uh, to let other toys know. Oh, Mary Bear's behind us. Oh, hey, Mary Bear. Uh, oh, because you're going to go in the room. Uh, and okay, Mary Bear is wearing a vest and a, a alpine hat. Uh Looking like an alpine. Are those later hosen? Okay, they are. So Mary Bear is going to spread the word to the other uh, friends. Uh, sorry, sometimes I call you toys, but I know you're friends, uh, Mary Bear. So that's our plan. Um, oh, so th that'll help uh, create a distraction for us. Uh, it's also a clock for the, our friends. We, you know, now Vidul is going to know the friends are up to something. But as far as we know, they don't know we're here. And I think that's everything. So does anybody have anything? Okay, we, uh, go ahead. Uh, go ahead, uh, Eleanor. Yeah, so what's what, what should our plan be? Well, I'd say if uh, 
we go, like, uh, I'd say, Granada, why don't you go first and uh, we'll, we'll slowly follow behind at a distance. Uh, maybe I'll go last. To be just in Mary Bear, you could be in between us. Mary Bear, why don't you go? Why don't we go? Uh, Granada, Zell, Mary Bear, Eleanor, Wada, and I. Uh, how's that sound, to everybody? Okay. Uh, Granada, why don't you? Okay, so you're proceeding. Okay, good. Okay, so far so good. Very stealthily, and um. First thing you notice is a lot of noise, uh, echoey noise, um, banging, uh, hammering, clank, clanking, uh, raised voices, like a hum of activity. And okay, now I'm at a um, junction, and we've seen these junctions in other places where we had to climb over it, but I'm. Uh, I'm going to look down in this junction and see what I can see. Okay, can't get a full, uh, the room is very dusty. And uh, it, uh, I can't get a full view of the room. I just looked down and came back. Don't worry, I'm not talking while my head's down there. But what I can see is that uh, the canal that runs through the center of the room is drained. In the canal, the part I can see is um um like uh full of different some big rocks some small rocks some piles of uh sand and there's friends working on the rocks but there's also Mary Bear maybe you could help us with this there's friends that are like um friends stuck together but they're moving around like they're one sentient being one of which is very very large um, Mary Bear, could you help us? Yeah, this is Mary Bear. Those are, um, um, changed friends, uh, changed at the hands of a duel by some sort of magic, uh, process, uh, where, uh, it's called the, the Voltron. And that's what Vendul does is Voltron, the, uh, or mighty, the Vadul says something like Voltron, mighty Morphin, uh, something else, uh, and the, the there's different size. Uh, we, one we call a giant friend, which is many many friends into one body, and most of those friends were taken from other rooms uh, that are a little bit more empty now. And then there's big friends, which are not as big as the giant friends. Uh, and those friends have, uh, um, v Vidul also has uh, uh, not total control over them, but an influence over them. They kind of just uh, are like uh, what we've been told when we've tried, I've tried to secretly communicate with them is that there's just a dull buzz. Uh, and so they just do what Vidul says. Uh, which is, and, uh, and then there's ones that are about the size of all of you, uh, which we, we just, like, uh, we don't have a name for them. I mean, you're kind of like human-sized friends, but that's too long. So we just say those friends. And so those, the three different sized friends are actually, yeah, someone said they're moving in, in and out of this room. They take these giant rocks, uh, that outside of the attraction, Vidul's extracting from somewhere using other uh, non-ride beings. But because we're so plentiful, they bring the rocks in and then we change the sizes. Uh, and so the larger friends carry the rocks and then they bring them to a northern part of the ride where apparently, so Vidul's using it to reflow the water and dry out areas, and then also taking rocks as they dig out. It's and someone actually said, uh, I believe it was someone who was become a friend who was one, and actually they're a seal. They said that this is not rock. It's cor, cor, I don't know cor cor some quarrel. So that's what's happening is uh, they're, they're, they're changing the size of rocks to fit what Vidul needs the rocks for. 
or um, making them into d d d d dust, which also Vadul needs, because Vadul's trying to m change the flow of the water. Okay, that's interesting. Thank you, uh, Mary Bear. Okay, so we can't, can you see, uh, Granada, you can't see the balloon, huh? Okay, no. So we need to find the balloon. Uh, Granada, why don't you go down the, 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 um, uh, Mary Bear, you said the balloon. Right now we came in the uh, east side of the room, right? And is the, uh, I can't remember, is it in the south or where's the rock? I wrote it down somewhere where we were discussing our ideas. Okay, so it should just be north of us, right? Because we're already in the room. So why don't you take that junction to the right, Granada, and see where that goes, and then uh, and then come back. But don't do anything, okay? Okay. Okay, Granada. Uh, you, you didn't, okay, so Granada's back. Uh, okay, Granada, what do you see? Okay, good news, not great news. So... I went a bit further and not that far down, and that's kind of why the sounds are so clear. There's a, um, the, the roof and a part of the attraction, um, has fallen in. And, but I can see the balloon. Uh, but the balloon is like right above. So there's two bridges over the canals. I got a better view now than I know what I'm looking at from Mary Bear. So there's two, so on the west wall is a giant opening, and that's where some of the rocks are coming in. Now, not that far from the giant opening is a ramp down to the canal where they're working on the rocks, and a ramp up, uh, uh, and then there's a bridge, uh, one bridge going north uh, to connect um, out another giant opening where they must be bringing the rocks out. And on that bridge is some sort of being, uh, maybe like, a, I mean, something not friendly. A few. So let me see. I did, did, I did try. It's dark in there. Yeah, so on the bridge, the northern bridge, uh, are two, um, uh, like a little bit bigger than us, uh, um, I don't know, orgs or ogres? I don't know. And then there's also giant and, and human size uh, and mid-size of these large friends. Then there's kind of a peninsula, right, where the northern bridge comes out of. And on the peninsula, there's also at each, the, uh, there's an up ramp and a down ramp on either side of the bridge. One going down on the left side of the bridge, the west side and one coming up on the east side or the right side of the bridge, and they're kind of curved, uh, you know, because uh, there's big rocks. And there's also, uh, like, two or orgs or ogres or whatever, and they're mostly encouraging the hard work of the friends. And then on the other side of the bridge near the big opening is another ogre type, uh, not that far from the balloon. Like, from if they looked up, uh, they could easily see the hot air balloon. Well, a lot of times they do have their back to it. Now, below us, I can't see what's below us, and I, I could just barely see that there's another bridge uh, to the west and below us. Uh, so there's probably other, and there's activity there too. Okay, Lord Von Chill here. So this is a not a... Uh, huh. So, um... Oh, no. Let me not... Um, okay... Well, uh, let's, so at this ju junction, huh, not sure what we should do then, because, uh, we have to get, I mean, we, it looks like we need to learn more, uh, Granada, like, what if you went, uh, to the, so this kind of thing falls apart, uh, our, our tube falls apart up there, you're saying, where the roof, uh, fell in, could you see if there's any way for us to sneak in? on the east side, so on the right side, and back, so that you could, could you and, um, I don't know, Eleanor or Zell try to get it in there and see if you could see what's under us uh, and see if you could stealthily get in that room. Yeah, we could do that. Uh, okay, so let's, uh, I mean, I just got to say, though, 
um, before we try, I do have a concern that I haven't spoken about. Uh, this is Granada of Darmok and no Temba when the walls fell, but, uh, uh, or Tembo, you know, it, it, the thing is that, uh, this is very strange, right? We used to be making this game. Now, as far as I've been able to tell, because a few days have passed, at least in the game, we're actually here. This room seems to have, uh, quite the level of peril. So I'm just wondering what'll happen to us, uh, because we haven't really been involved in any trouble, right? I mean, a, m a minor amount of it. Uh, and I do feel, it, I really, my uh, from sleeping in this tube, I, I have a couple aches, you know. And I'm just, feel, I'm just, I guess I'm baffled. I don't know if that's the right word. Uh, uh, does anybody else feel that way? This is Wada. I'm, 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 I, I, I understand how you're feeling. I feel frustrated. Yeah, and cons I share your concern. Um, does anybody else? Yeah, 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 this is Eleanor. I, 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 I also, uh, yeah, I also, um, I've been in touch with the Florences, so I have a little bit of comfort with this, but yeah, I mean, I don't, I just like, I'm, this is Zell. Could I just add, I, I'm feeling the same thing, but I kind of feel like we're past, uh, we've passed a point, you know? Like where, like, uh, and I'm not, I'm I, like Renata, Wada, Eleanor. I totally understand. Mary Bear is actually staring at us while we're talking about this. And so I think we've passed a point of, um, so I don't know what to do. I'm at a loss too, but I also, I know is we have to probably go forward. Yeah. Because then now, as we know, there's not, a, doing nothing's not an option. So. Lord Vanchel, I guess everybody's saying how they feel. Uh, okay, Mary Bear, how are you feeling? This is Mary Bear. I mean, you know the situation we're in, so I'm having trouble relating to your feelings, but I can respect them. Uh, Lord Vanchel here. You know, I I feel uh, uh, more than frustration. You know, you know, I feel like pumpkin crashing is how I feel. That if I could put you know action to my feelings. Uh, What's pumpkin crashing? A pumpkin crashing is when you uh, you take a pumpkin. You know when they they celebrated the All Hallows Eve, right? Uh, uh, oh yeah, Mary Bear knows about it. Uh, even uh, uh, so, All Hallows Eve is this thing. Like uh, you've you've have you all celebrated? You you're familiar, okay? For you've seen the films or if you celebrate it. And one of the things we would do is go up to the ramparts, uh, and cause they had the lanterns of jackals, right. Uh, and we would throw at the, at the end of all Hallows Eve at the strike of, uh, the end of the night and the beginning of the day, we would throw the uh, pumpkins, uh, off the ramparts, uh, the lanterns of jackals. And we would say pumpkin smash, pumpkin crash, uh, and it was relieving, uh, but it was also, it was part of our family's belief system. It was, uh, uh, anyway, it, I don't, we don't have, I don't want to get into that because there's even stronger feelings there, but it was a way to express my feelings. Mary Bear, go ahead. Yeah. It just made me think of something. Um, you know, there's a storage room that, uh, like, I think it was one of those junctions back there. It's, like, actually in the wall between the two rooms where they would store the, uh, because this would have an overlay of, um, for Halloween. We, they would dress us up for Halloween and for, uh, uh, what do they call that? Mer Christmas holiday for Christmas and Hanukkah and Kwanzaa. They would dress us up and we would celebrate in New Year's and um, they uh, all that stuff was stored in a storage room in between the two buildings. It's still there because sometimes I go there when I'm looking for extra parts. So, um, like, I, I don't know, maybe um, the storage, the storage door, I didn't even think about it because you'd have to go, you could get in, but then you'd have to go down the, between the two walls. 
but you could make more noise probably because the walls would dampen it. And there should be a door into this room uh, from the storage room. The door for our room is blocked. Uh, so I'd have to, that was back when I was better at climbing, but I can't climb anymore. Okay. Okay. Lord Von Chill here. I'm thinking of an idea. I'm thinking we should, uh, we should, um, okay, here's what we're going to do. Granada, can you go see if you can get into the room and just do some more scouting for us? And then I'm, I'm, I'm formulating an, a, a plan or, or options, uh, if everybody's okay with that. Okay. Granada's are, oh, you're already back, Granada. Okay. Yeah. So Granada of Darmok here. So. I could, I did stealthily get in, like, uh, I was able to get from this conduit, uh, to part of the roof and do that fairly quietly. And, um, I don't think all of us as a party would be able to do that, but I could see the rest of the room underneath us is a bridge. There's a rest area against the eastern wall with a lot of friends. Uh, that's where they rest, or and it looks like they're repairing one another, maybe, Mary Bear. Mary Bear is nodding enthusiastically. So that's where they go when they're not working with this coral, coral or whatever. There's also other orgs or ogres or whatever um, keeping an eye on stuff, not on the resting ones, but more on the work activity. I could also see the balloon, um, and so um, I think that me and someone else that's very nimble or has, like, powers in case, uh, like, uh, like, do you know any levitation spells, Wada? I think we, I think I, we, okay, tell us more of what you're thinking. Well, Lord Von Chill, what was your plan? Okay, that was my plan was... Uh, Here's the thing. We we got a couple options. I, I was running some numbers in my head, and uh, you're saying there's between six and eight ogres or orcs. You're not sure. And either way, and there's probably a, one that's like a lead, like you said, there's a couple that are bigger, right? Uh, now, so the best case scenario, if we were to charge in, if the larger friends were passive— we would still barely, we're at like a 50-50. I mean, I say 60-40 for us, uh, chance of victory. If there's no one else comes for backup and none of the friends do anything, maybe 70. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty confident, but I'm still saying best case scenario, 70-30. But we'd still, even at 70-30, we'd need some rest. And with those giant openings and stuff, I just don't see that happening. Now, uh, now, of course, you know, I'm concerned for Granada of Darmok. I have strong feelings for Granada of Darmok uh, and of Wada. But if you could get there, we could go down. I'm thinking, this is what I'm thinking, All Hallows Eve. Uh, now, this isn't a normally a plan I would come up with, uh, but uh, Scooby, you know, that uh, wrote the other uh, adventure, always had it, it was part of it, like Space Whales and uh, Trick or Treating. I think that was one of their autobiographies. Uh, we go down, we dress up like friends, like we're uh, amalgamated friends or whatever it is, large human sized friends, and we act the part. Uh, now Mary Bear goes and, and helps some of the friends and maybe spreads the word. So we'll, we'll split up. I'll go by myself to the lower bridge. Uh, Zell and Eleanor, you sneak if you can get, this would be just best case scenario, right? If you could get into the canal, uh, then get towards the uh, main bridge, right? But from the canal, huh? Um, it's ri it's going to be, it's going to take some risk, but that way everyone would be looking down to the South, right? Okay. No, I'll do the first distraction. I'll just trick or treat on the bridge. I'll get in the room if we can get into the room. I mean, there's a lot of assumptions here, but we'll, this is also a flexible plan. I'll create a Southern, southernmost distraction on that bridge during the first distraction, uh, uh, Wada and, uh, 
Granada, you get as close as you can and see what way you're going to get to the balloon, right? Uh, I know I could tell Granada you want to use levitation or your whatever that thing is with the hook, uh, grappling hook. You love that grappling hook. And so after I've created my distraction and the orcs or orgs start to react to it, but I'm not going to try to th do anything, then uh, is, uh, Mary Bear, if you could create a distraction, if not, you know, so then we're creating three different sets of distractions, if we can, while you're getting the keys. Um, now, the next thing would be us getting out of the room and meeting back up. And I don't know uh, what we would do or what we're, I don't even know where we should go next, actually. Or, I mean, we, we start... Uh, and we work our way. We deal with everybody in the room. Hope the toys. Mary Bear, do you think you could get the bigger toys to work with us? Not sure. Okay. Hopefully they, okay. So again, 70-30, Mary Bear says uh, the, the, they'd be passive. Uh, so that's not worth the risk. Because I was going to say we could just power through, then go through the large nor northern hole into the next room. But Mary Bear, you said there's some sort of underground thing. What about getting to the roof? Is that possible? Uh, uh, like Granada, like, do you think that's possible? So it could be possible. Okay. So what do we do that? Uh, okay. So how would you two would get to the roof? Uh, okay. So I guess then we have a couple other options. We could go back through. Okay. Yeah. I guess we would either try to get to the roof, uh, Try to get out uh, back through the hot, like the storage room, and uh, or um, Mary Bear. Okay, go ahead, Mary Bear. There's also like yeah, you could go through somewhere maybe covered by rocks, but it isn't a is the drain for where they would drain the water out of. Now that's the drain that you same drain you saw in one of the handy halls where there are beings down there. But the worst case scenario, you could try to go through the drain, uh, um, and that like uh, I can ma I can write out a map for you to get to the net where you need to go to get to access the security room. But also, yeah, some of the light is provided by these clear um, plastic domes. Uh, so I think Granada and 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 Wada could get to that room as well, or you could all get there. Okay, so let's try it then. What does everybody think? Uh, okay, so let's uh, do some basic maths. Okay, okay, so, okay, so, oh boy. I shouldn't have looked at the math before we acted. Okay, but we have to go. Okay, so we're going to go down. We'll see, uh, Granada, can I give you a, yes, uh, see you soon. Wada, best, best to you. Okay, so they're going out uh, and trying to climb and get ready. Okay, now we're going down. Now we're dressing up. Okay, this is pretty cool. There's like a lot of uh, stuff we can dress up as. Okay, now, okay, getting this door open is unexpectedly difficult. Uh, and it's going to take Zell and I a bit of repeated effort. That is a lot of noise. Uh, oh, I'm hearing some other noise, though. So Wada must have known. Wada's creating some sort of wind noise. Okay, so, okay, we got the door open. Okay, let's slowly, okay, nobody noticed, except for the friends. That, oh, Mary Bear, go ahead. Mary Bear's hugging some of the friends that are lying here. Oh, yeah, and we're kind of shaded by the caved-in roof uh, from view. That's why the friends are laying around. Mary Bear's talking to the friends and nodding to us and nodding and thumbs-upping. Half-halfing me? Okay, yeah. Oh, by my costume. I forgot I was trick-or-treating. Okay, so, uh, Zell and Eleanor. Okay, yeah, let's hug. Okay. Yeah, no, this is uh, friends. We'll do this together. It'll be okay. As, uh, so I'm out of set. So I'm going to go down and go across, like the bridge comes across to here. Uh, so I'm going to go down, sneak, walk down to that bridge. Like, uh, I'm watching how they're moving. Very, uh, um, like, uh, simply, I'm going to walk and, and then go up to that guard on the bridge and say, hey, I'm trick-or-treating. But I'll try to use, like, a, a friend's voice. Maybe I'll even sing the friend's song. 
welcome to the world of friends. Uh, come, come on in or whatever it is. Uh, and then you two head to the, when I get down there, uh, uh, this is perfect. You'll be able to fall right into the, the thing, the canal up against this part of the roof that fell in. Okay, looks like Wada and uh, Granada are ready to go. And uh, so I'm going to go. Oh, oh, I'm uh, going to um, trick-or-treating. Uh, just going to walk here like uh, like uh, like Frankie, right? Uh, I'm going to put my arms out like I'm Frankie. Oh, you see, yeah, you, you, oh, yeah, I'm a friend. Uh, I'm trick, trick-or-treating. What, what, trick-or-treating. I, what am I doing? I'm trick. Get back to work. Uh, trick or treating. Trick or treating. Is there something wrong with this friend? Okay, call uh, trick or treating. Yeah, call over the other worker or the other uh, guards. Uh, trick or treating. Okay, is Ellen, uh, Eleanor in there? Okay, in there. Uh, Okay, they're at the bottom one. Oh, boy, that's not good. Wada just fell down. Now everybody's looking over. Wada looks okay. Granada threw the grappling hook and got uh, hooked on the um, basket. But, uh, oh, there goes Al Eleanor and uh, Zell. Um, and they seem to be trick-or-treating now. At least, oh, now I am uh, better roll the dice because these two guards are... Uh, uh, attempting to deal with me. Luckily, these two are just entry level, uh, so this is not going to be too much of a. Oh, ouch! Uh, but uh, okay, Eleanor. Uh, you know I can do both things. It seems to be that. Uh, okay, they're. Uh, okay, they're focused on. Uh, oh, now the toy. Okay, now the toys are. Uh, oh wow, they're throwing those rocks. Uh, so, uh, Mary Bear. Oh, like everybody's pretending to trick or treat. Uh, that's a trick. Uh, so this is working. I'll just keep, I'm just not going to move down here because now I have three, uh, well, two dispatched and one more headed towards me. And uh, Eleanor and uh, uh, Zell are uh, okay. And it uh, looks like uh, uh, Wada is just like, uh, okay, Wada has was a one on one. Oh, no, Granada's now in the, the, uh, the basket of the balloon and has the key. Okay. And now, uh, Granada's using, okay. Well, Granada's helping Wada. Okay. They only have one to deal with. Okay. So, uh, we didn't have a symbol. So I'll just make a, uh, uh, a pumpkin smash. I'll just keep yelling that very loudly pumpkin smash. Oh, now everybody's yelling it. I'm backing up, uh, towards this room here. Okay, I'm the only one. Hi, Mary Bear. Thanks for starting that. Okay, so I'm going to have to go back in here. And, uh, oh, there's like, uh, okay, Granada's going to the roof. Uh, okay, Wada. Yeah, let me, Wada jumped in and is coming around. Wada, let me pull you out of the canal here. But we are cut off from uh, uh, Zell and... Uh, Zell and, uh, what do you call it? Uh, sorry, Eleanor, Eleanor. Okay. So what if we could, we could use range, uh, oh, thunder wave. That's a great idea. Um, uh, and I'll nod with my head and say pumpkin smash. They could go through the bottom there. Oh, okay. Whoa, boy. This is good. The, uh, large, uh, uh at some point, Vidul's going to know what's happening, but, but actually uh, splitting in three different ways is great. Okay. They're headed towards the drain. Okay, so we will keep, uh, I'll keep uh, using my uh, bow and arrow, my trusty bow and arrow. Okay, uh, Granada's through the roof and gone, and hopefully totally safe. Uh, and uh, we didn't really come up with a meeting place. That was a hole in my plan. I mean, the next room, which we all have map. Oh, Mary Berry gave us maps at least. Okay, so, uh, okay, there's, there's, okay, now, uh, it is a bit chaotic here. So they don't, oh, they didn't realize, they, okay, our, our costumes work. So they didn't realize, uh, okay, so this is good. Now they don't know who's who. So let's get out of here. Mary Bear, you're going to be okay? Just do, do our part. Okay. 
Yeah, I don't think we should. We won't. We, won't, we can't get to the drain. There's too many ogres. Uh, so we should. They're gone. We're okay. Let's go, Wada. And we've made our getaway. And we'll climb. Okay, Wada. Let's close. Yeah, let's close that door up. Uh, and we could. Ooh, good thing we left these ropes here. Maybe we could try to get to the roof and meet up with Granada. And hopefully, like Wada and um, um. I mean, I'm sorry, Wada. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, I can help you climb. No worries. No, I did. Yeah, I did take a couple. Uh, so, yeah, do you have, uh, oh, you do have a potion. Thank you. Okay, so we're climbing up. So you think we could get to the roof? Because Granada said, to, not sure. Oh, Granada's right. I can see Granada. Okay, they don't see us because it's so chaotic down there. Okay, thank you. Oh, there's the, there's the grappling hook. Okay, so we'll climb across. Okay, why do, oh, you're going to levitate because you fell last time. Oh, you did levitate. Wow. Okay, you do, okay, I'm going to go. Oh, I'm swinging. Okay, I'm holding. Now I'm repelling. Is this, oh, no, it's going up. Okay, I'm climbing. Hello, Granada. So good to see you, Wada. Let's have a group hug. Uh, so we're on the roof. We could make our way towards, uh, we're supposed to head, this roof is pretty empty. Uh, this is the only big hole in it. Uh, and we want to head towards uh, the upper north uh, east corner sky skylights. Uh, yeah, hopefully they'll find us. Uh, I wonder what Zell and Eleanor are doing right now. Okay, Zell, so, uh, um, we're in here. Now, the good news is I don't think anyone noticed us getting in here because of the large rocks and the fact that the giant friends were throwing rocks. Um, and I think they were found because we didn't really engage that much. Uh, they were more focused on Wada and, um, Lord Von Chill. But, uh, do you think we should put some distance? We could follow this path from Mary Bear for a ways. Okay. So we're going to head this way. And then I believe we're going to go right here. No, left here. No, I believe left. Thank you, Zell. Thanks, yeah. Okay, at the next junction, we're going to turn right. Uh, okay, now there's a door, and I hear activity on the other side of the door. No, not um, not talking. What if you go back, because we came through the other door that was open. Can you go back and seal that door and then put some noises on there? I think we should rest uh, and evaluate things. We still have a little ways to go, but I don't think we should go through this door if we're, if they're not going to pursue us right now. You know what I mean? Okay, so let's rest. You got that door secure? And Okay, we'll hear anybody coming. Okay, and we have a distant from us. Okay, so let's rest here then. I'm sure they're all fine, and I'm sure this is going to work out great. So let's rest together, and uh, good night, Zell. Oh, good night, Eleanor. Okay, yeah. No, we can hold. Well, let's hold one another. Yeah, I think so. This is a condition for holding because all will be well.